Hey, everybody. Welcome to the end of the week. We've been drawing all week. Thought we'd take a we break. We just wait a minute. We'll get some visitors here. Oh, okay. We'll wait till we get some visitors. Yes. I cleaned the studio up for everyone. I'm very excited about that. Whoa. Yeah, should be good. The dogs are here. They're ready to go nuts. They're like, oh, you're going to take a tour of the studio? <laughs> well... Well, we, we can't wait to go crazy. <laughs> Here we are in the studio. Say hello. So we've just come from down these stairs. Dun, 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 dun. Lots of artwork in this. Hi, Phoenix James. Oh, good. I can see. People Th starting to sign on? Yep. Oh, good. This is an artwork filled stairway. Yes. That we have just come down. The artwork is, some of it is light sensitive. Like in other words, it can't get too much light on it. So we keep it in this kind of dim stairwell to keep the art from fading. But there's a couple of my favorite pieces. Hey, Brandon Power. Hey. Hey, Lexi. All right. So we've got some art walls. on the walls and to course. inspire us. Yes. And here we are in the studio. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I'm super excited to be here. We've been drawing all week, and um, and I cleaned the studio for you last night. I mean, it's it's normally in kind of a state of disarray, but I thought since we're showing it off today, we'd clean it up and kind of go through, and I'll do a general tour, and then you guys ask what you want to see close up or more of, and Ange will tell me what you ask. That's right. And I will blather on about it for a few minutes so that you can uh we can feel like we're all here together of course the dogs are very excited they're already wrestling because they're down <laughs> in the studio and uh let's get started awesome so here we are this is where tony works uh every day you come we're, down here we're in the basement of our house it's a walkout basement we're on a little bit of a hill so it, it's facing east so in the morning this is filled with sun uh you can see here's my drawing table where we've been doing the live uh drawings and our forger piece is here uh, yesterday. If you from yesterday, if you've been tuning in, you'll see Ange that I uh, took your advice. Oh, whited you got rid there. of the oh, the beard, the beard and, is yeah, gone. Beard's whited gone. it out. I whited it out. So this is my view uh, out. This this field is always filled with. Uh, we get there was a groundhog out there the other day. We get red fox. We get plenty of squirrels. We get red tailed hawks. We've seen uh, deer. Wild, deer, wild turkey. It's just so inspiring. Um, you'll also notice there's a lot of clutter. There's lots of toys and things I've collected over the years. Um, these are the flat files that contain um, um, all the art for all the various projects. And, there's the dogs uh, going crazy. The dogs are going to go crazy for a few minutes. Um, so if there's something that you guys are like, whoa, what's that thing? We can definitely show it to you. I'm going to try and not make any of you too seasick when I move this camera around. To show all the so hopefully. Toys. A lot of old toys. A lot. Of, so um, I, we've been we've been to a lot of artist studios before, Ant, right? Like we've gone and visited with different artists. And it's always interesting to me that the studio can be like an extension of the personality. Yes. And so... My studio is kind of a mutation of my bedroom as a kid. It's got way more things than I had as a kid, but it has a lot of the same stuff that I had. It has toy dinosaurs, it has models, it has games, and that's because I want artifacts that take me back to being 8 or 9 or 10 or 12 years old. And the older I get, the harder sometimes that is to do. So I have filled the studio with things that mm -hmm. remind me of my childhood. Okay, so this is their opportunity to get a tour of your space so you get to be the one to uh, tell them about what they're asking about. And the first thing we have, which is everybody asks, what is the cabinet behind <laughs> Tony? All right, this ridiculous and insane cabinet. And first show them my original okay. supply cabinet, which is over okay. here. This sure. is my original supply cabinet oh. that I keep all my art supplies in and kept them in for years. What's in here now? Anything? Toys and, and most of them are empty. Sofa's got okay. some art crafting supplies. This, when we lived in New York City, that was it, right? That's what I kept all my paint in. Correct. When we moved here, we had bought a piece from a man named Richard Dunbrack. He's a found objects artist. He creates things from found objects. He goes to places 
demolishing uh, homes or barns, etc., and he builds furniture out of found objects. We asked him to design a ridiculous supply cabinet, something to hold my supplies. He was reluctant at first. We had bought a clock from him, and he's like, I don't do commissions. I don't want to do any commissions. I've had bad experiences doing commissions. People want the thing to be pink or orange or whatever. I don't like it. He delivers his clock that's upstairs, and he's like, what do you guys do for a living? So we tell him. And um, he comes downstairs. He's kind of looking around the studio at all my crap. And then he's kind of like, well, what is it that you want? So I show him the supply cabinet. I show him the space where I want the new supply cabinet to go. And he goes, well, what do you want it to look like? So I go into our uh, storage and I grab a bunch of my children's books and I hand them all my children's books. And I go, that's it. That's all the input you're going to get from me. Now you know what I do. Oh, show them that. <laughs> that's playing. That's good because Oren wanted oh, to see the dogs. Check it out. Like, I mean, we should just be live streaming this all day. All day Come long. on. People need that. Dog cam. That's what my stomach is doing every time I look mm. at the news, Ange. <laughs> Growling. Dog at fight stomach. live. No, they're, they're buddies. But they're playing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go on for a while. Mimi's oh. like, you stole my bandana. Give it back. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is good. Okay, back to the cabinet. So Anyway, long story short, he was so inspired by my books, he built this thing um, just for me. And the, the funny part is, that is all my art supplies right there. It holds everything, all my pencils and pens, all my uh, acrylic washes in here. This is it. This is where we keep everything. Um, so Soph keeps her supplies down. Yep. At the bottom. Yep, so that's our crafting supplies. Oh, show them the really cool thing. I don't know if it'll work right now. I don't know if it'll do it. We'll see. We'll see. So, not only is it just super cool and functional, he put some cool little surprises. Like, what is this? This is the. This is a sand mold for a train wheel. So, this is the actual mold. He cut it in half that they use when they pour the steel for an actual train wheel and then the doll head is it's from a, a doll, doll factory yeah. it's a mold from and a the, doll factory burned down in upstate new york yeah and, and the, the um the opera glasses are supposed to be my glasses like indicative of my glasses this it's is a board. naughty nelly this is a naughty nelly that you use to remove your boots if you're a cowboy she'd lay on her back and you'd put your foot on her head and kick your heels between her legs to pull your uh shoes off for my love wow. of D and d and gaming he put old parlor table games game tables in here which are awesome legs and then and um okay so there's a crazy thing on the side i don't know if you guys can see the the woman's head it's right there see the woman's head and then there's a bunch of marbles so here's here's what okay, it does. we're gonna we'll see, see if, if this works. works doesn't always work well it, it depends on if everything's i'll open it up and you know okay hold on i'm going to show you this too there's down at the bottom little motorcycle guy okay here we All go right. so i'm going to put this marble in the woman's head goes. It's going to go down some stairs. It's going to come around. Go between the videos and not. Oh, stuck. there must be it, an art supply. Yeah, so it's got so much art supply shoved in there, but normally it comes down. Comes <laughs> down. Yeah, don't even bother. <laughs> so, uh, so, and then you would hear a ding at the bottom. Yeah, so there it is. Alright, what's next? Okay. Any other requests? Alright, what else do you guys? So if you see anything cool that you're interested in knowing about <laughs> other than If the... you've ever emailed us through the website or maybe through Facebook, um, that's where Carol's this is Carol's uh, station, her desk where she sits. Our studio manager. Yep, studio manager. Used to be Emily for many years and now it's Carol. Um, this we just to give you an idea, she sits here, I sit over there, or I'm sitting there. I'm gonna show you Tony's other area that he hangs in. But this is uh, to do. Th don't think that your emails or your letters go un unnoticed. She's literally feet away from me. She handles all the correspondence and um, and and helps keep me very organized. Cool. We have a few um, crazy things that we've bought over the years. Inch has purchased a Elton John Captain Fantastic pinball machine. <laughs> One of the last. Um, not analog, but um, non-electrical, like non-circuit pinball machines uh, that was made in the late 70s. Uh, Elton John uh, as the pinball wizard from the film Tommy. We also have a Pac-Man machine that we use to blow off steam. 
It's turned off right now. Um, Sophia's bubble hut that she's built this week during the her quarantine. So she's made her own <laughs> quarantine space. You should definitely mm-hmm. show them inside. These are just, you know, because you have to decorate with pom-poms and googly eyes. Yeah, that was the chimney. And inside of the bubble hut is the chill space. It's like, you know, you just hang. Got some curtains in there. Got some curtains. That she used old pants to make. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And that's where her and the dogs are chilling. Yes. Usually. Yep. And uh, and then you can see outside. You can see kind of what we see. Yeah. Every yeah, day. this pinball machine is very cool. Who's that? Can probably turn the... Do, 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 do. He's a pinball wizard. Okay, we'll turn the packing machine on for a little Got bit. to be the best. <laughs> um, you know you've made it when you just have a giant cutout of yourself. This was for my kid. 50th birthday, right? <laughs> yes. Even Scott Fisher saw to this. So for my 50th birthday, they decorated with... Pictures of my gigantic head. Come on, let's sit, hold like, it up for scale, T. I just need to really. <laughs> Pretty good, right? Yeah. Take your screenshot now, folks. Yeah, there it is. Uh, some insects I've collected and bought over the years. This one's from, um, I know, Busy Mockingbird. Maya Hendricks, is that her name? Mm-hmm. Uh, I love her stuff. If you don't follow her, she's on Instagram. She's such an incredible crafter. So she did these painted beetles with cool tattoos that I totally love. So some, some insects from around the world. Um, so oh, we've got, so we've got. Kicked in. You hear uh, it? Yeah. I turned it on. I hear I'll it. turn it down a little bit. It's a little loud. You guys want to come over and play some Pac-Man or Galaga? Oh this yeah, the, I'll kick your butt in Galaga. Yeah, you will. <laughs> yeah, watch out for Ange. That's right. There you go, Pac-Man machine. It's one of my secret. Abilities. Um, so we have flat files. More flat files. This is art supplies and things that inspire me. Um, so there's there's some original art that we haven't hung on the walls. Um, and uh, so to give you an idea, let's see, let's pull an original out that is maybe not hanging on the walls. Look at that. There's a drawing from Mo Willems that he gave to Sophia. Um, she did a drawing for his birthday. Here's some coloring book covers that I bought for Ange off of eBay of all places. Some These original are, art. We're, we're big art collectors. These are from the 1940s and 1950s. Unbelievable. I love this. So cool. This one's from 1956. So neat to see the gouache. Yeah, these are all originals. So we, we, okay, we haven't bought as much original art as we used to, but we used to buy quite a bit. There's a cell from Dragon's Lair. <laughs> oh, yeah. Our walls um, are pretty full right now, so we've taken yeah, a break. Yeah, so there's not much. much, out, much What's out in the bottom out. drawer? It's unlabeled. Dun, dun, dun. This is, I think, printouts and portfolios and things. So, like, I've had this Bernie Wrights in portfolio since high school. I bought. I remember buying it. Uh, here's Frank Frazetta's Lord of the Rings portfolio. So, just more ephemera and stuff that I've kind of collected over the years. Jorgen, Jorgen wanted to know, is that a Baxa original? Yes, that was. Good eye. Yes, um, there is some Dungeons and Dragons art in here, if you want to see it. Hold on, let me turn a light on so you can see a little better. There you go. Yes, it's a Tom Baxa original from, um, looks like Dark Sun, and Tom gave this to me in 1994. How about that? Pretty cool. Held up all these years. There's a few other uh, Dungeons and Dragons originals that I've, I have. This one's from uh, one of the modules, the Diesel... Speaking of D&D, Jeff Easley is here with us, folks. Oh, that's awesome. I have a Jeff Easley original. The legend. Yes. Uh, Jeff, I hope you're well and doing well and your family's well. Uh, So, yeah, I have a a few Dungeons & Dragons originals. Okay. How many of your illustrations from Dragon Magazine do you still own, Dave Peterson asked? Oh, that's a good question. Well, um, some I have, some I don't. So, the magazines are here. In the flat file labeled editorial, and uh, I was not normally this organized, but Emily, our previous studio manager, really helped organize me. So I'm a lot much more organized, so you can see. So this is um, editorial. So this is all magazine work that I've done over the years. So you can see here's some, some art from, this looks like an interior from, this is Dungeon issue 61. I did that back in 1996. So there's some interior art here, kind of floating around. That uh, is, Mimi is, uh, actually, we don't know what she is. Somebody asked if she's a Chinese crested. We have no idea what she yeah, is. she's a, she's a we rescue. Call, we call her Mimi the Wonder Dog because we just wonder what she is. Here, Dave Peterson, here's, um, here, I can turn, there's a light on for here, too. Hold on. 
Wait for it. Show you guys some stuff in the there meantime. Boop, boop, boop. Those are from Dragon Magazine. There's a boulet. Rhymes with Robert Goulet. There's an ink egg. Ank, ank. Um, let me see. The, I have a few covers, but they're on tour, and they're right now they're at the Rockwell Museum, kind of resting in between exhibitions. Um, okay. Oh, there's other questions. So. About this art or other stuff? Um, not necessarily about this art. What else we got? Uh, somebody was like, Jeff Easley. I obsessed over Jeff Easley D&D &D in high school. Oh, well, then show him the Jeff Easley. We have Let's one see. You want to see some Jeff Easley? I have one Jeff Easley. Jeff, I've had it for years. Jeff, you can always comment on this piece. I've had it. Gee, I don't know. It's one of the first Gen Cons I went to. I bought it. And Jeff inscribed it to me. To Tony, a good art guy. Jeff, you're a man of many words. <laughs> But it sits proudly right here in the studio. I love it. There's another uh, prize possession if you're a Dungeons and Dragons fan. That's the original drawing of the pseudo dragon from the Monster Manual. Had it also for quite a few years. Okay. Do you have anything in the Planescape drawer? Yes. Let's okay, we're going to go back. How about CDs? Have you seen those in a while, people? <laughs> like, that's vintage. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to try and. Oh, there's a little tone. This is from the uh, Spider Week movie. They gave him a. Oh, yeah, somebody wanted to see Spider-Rick movie props. A chair. All right, I'm going to... I don't want to turn too fast because I don't want to make everybody barfy, so... Yeah. Um, this is a station where you do digital work, too, just so they can see. Yeah, really exciting. Uh, Sonos player and mm -hmm. uh, people texting me. I'll shut that off. Really very exciting. And, of course, there's little toys, toys everywhere and photos. And photos. A family. Oh, what was that? I don't know. Oh, a blue ribbon. ribbon. Yeah. One of, the only blue ribbon I ever won. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Here we go. Also, just, you know, how do we stay organized in case? We're going to head to the flat files here in a minute. But how do we stay organized? Our old studio manager, Emily Rich, who was amazing, put this in action. Um, she worked for Eric Carle for many years, who uh, wrote and illustrated The Very Hungry Caterpillar. And she did a whole organizational list of topics that we then add sub, uh, like, well, I guess what? All the assignments underneath and things that we need to follow up with. So this is a great way. We try to visit this see, like once a week and we go over everything. Um, and yeah, that's how we stay organized-ish. Or we try. Yeah, we try to stay organized. Okay, so Planescape. Planescape. I know some of you were asking about that. Planescape. I do have some Planescape art here. Again, some of it's at... Most of it's gone, but I do have some left. Um, I mean, it's been sold over the years to collectors and Gen Con, but I, we've held on to a few pieces that mean a lot to us for various reasons. Let's see. There's a, I'll try to find another one. That's a pretty good one. Here, will you laying that? I'll just Show hand over here for a minute. Fighting. Dog's fighting. Uh, <laughs> early uh, that's so funny. Okay, so here yeah. Go. Here's some plans. Oh! There's some what, Pippin? Art. That's Pippin. Okay, here's back. some Planescape art. From way back when. And this is, Angie, this is what happens usually when we have someone come over and visit and they want to see some of the old art. That's why we try to keep the tops of the flat files bare so they can pull art out and look at it and yeah. stuff. This I still have this awesome. great image of, um, oh, my brain's synapsing now. Um, he created over the garden wall. Um, Pat McHale. I was there. Pat McHale came to visit us, and he just pulled up a chair. Remember that? He just yeah. pulled up a chair and sat here for an hour and just looked at all the old d, &D and quiet. Planescape art. Here, eat your bone, buddy. All right, so there's some Planescape art. There's not a lot of sketches. There's some, not a lot, of the Planescape uh, art and sketches. There is a little bit. Here's some of the early, very early sketches. This was submissions, probably, to Planescape way back when. Do you have any one less stuff? Um, that didn't make it into the book. Oh, uh, probably. okay. Character creature sketches from one love that never met the light of day. Oh yeah. Tons of it. Okay. So here we go. And so any one love development work. Okay. So we got a couple requests for one love. Oh, great. So here's the one love. This holds everything for one love, all three books. And, um, he's okay. So let's see what we have here. Just to give you an idea the 
finished artwork for okay. one, though. I'm going to let done. you hold this for one second while I let him out. Okay. The finished artwork was done on vellum. So I would do a sketch, and uh, once the sketch was finalized, I would lay a sheet of vellum over and ink it right directly onto the vellum. Sometimes it was inked in stages. So here's a good example of that right here. This is a scene where Eva is in the sanctuary with Mother, and behind her outside were trees and a, and a landscape. So this is the trees and landscape. So you can kind of see this would have been laid behind it, kind of like animation in a way. Um, there were loads of sketches done for Wanla and many that never saw the light of day. So I have the folders now slightly organized. So here's like preliminary visual development and concept stuff for Wanla. Then, you know, Wanla 1 sketches, Wanla 2 sketches. So you had asked if there was anything didn't see the light of day. Let's take a look and see what we can see. I'll bring it up here. This is probably where it would be. And I'm doing this one-handed, so bear with me. Scott Fisher laughed that I had a, uh, a CD player still in my studio. He thought that was funny. All right, let's see what we have. Uh, let's see, here's Bastille. Early drawing of Bastille. These, uh, there's the Halcyonis. I'll kind of zip through a few of these. I won't, I mean, it's a stack. We could be here all day. It's a very early drawing of Rovender. There's another early version of Rovender. There you go. It's a very different version that never saw the light of day. It might have been um, put in the um, in the uh, one of the limited edition sketchbooks that Simon Schuster published that we used to do. There's early drawing of Eva and her stuffy Bibu. One of the first drawings of Eva. And sketches of mother. So yeah. Uh, this is all world developing. I'll just dive in the middle and see what we see. Ah, there's an early version of the Halcyonis. So they were more parakeet-like. But it gives you an idea. So lots of, uh, lots of one list stuff. It's, uh, you know, I, I have so much. The sketches are the one thing I always hold on to. And uh, Chad asked, what kind of paper am I sketching on? I sketch on like laser paper that I buy at Staples. We've been talking about that. I'll show you in here. Um, we're going to go through the bathroom, the studio bathroom, and into a little storage place where I keep all my um, office supplies and art supplies. This is my favorite paper, Chad, that I work on. It is Staples. It is laser white paper. It, the big Here's the big thing, Chad, 32 pounds. It's really heavy. I love working on this, but I have other papers that I work on as well. Um, so hopefully that helps give you an idea. And I used to work on sketchbooks and in sketchbooks, but I stopped because the paper's easier to scan. It's easier for me to throw another sheet of paper on top of it and trace. Um, and I just find it a lot more, it's, I'm less precious if it's on a loose sheet of paper. I can, I can keep it or throw it away, but, um, but there you go. There's tons of sketches. And, um, you know, one of these days we'll figure out what to do with all of them. I, I, I used to talk about making sketchbooks for every book I did because they all have so much. But I think that's a, a bit of an impossibility because there's just so much. There's just reams of sketches here. So that's some of the one. What size stuff. and kind of paper do you sketch on? We just did that, Andrew. Okay, just good. Over it. Yep. All right. Chad, I'm back. Got it. Andrew's back. I let the doggies out. Who let the dogs out? I you did. did. Who, all right. Who, What's who? next, Ange? Who do we got? Any other? Okay. And, of course, there's just little treasures everywhere. Everywhere. This is a pretty cool one. This is a Mr. Spider made out of Lego that Theo Black made for me for my birthday. So that's Holly Black, uh, who I collaborated with on Spiderwick. This is her husband. He made this. Him and his son, Sebastian, made this for me. And I think that is pretty awesome. That's a Joseph Wu, Wu Origami uh, Spiderwick sprite. Oh, how about pretty this cool. thing? That's kind of cool. That is a early version. We talked about some of the Spiderwick movie stuff. That is a maquette or a small uh, sculpted model of a scene that never made it in the Spiderwick film of the trolls. The goblins were going to be riding on trolls. And um, in fact, let's show a little more Spiderwick stuff. Okay. We, had a, we requested that yesterday. Oh, what's the purple and blue creature? I don't know. This is just some like. 
It's something we just bought at the... Here. Unicorn dude. It's like a weird... <laughs> and he's bendy. And he's cute. He's There's no fly, old. but I'll show you, uh, Steve, I'll show you the fly. We do have a fly in here, and we'll show There's you that, maquette. too. There's a fly maquette over there by the window. It's always little just bits of and things. And I'm constantly changing it. Like, I'm constantly noodling and moving it around, and there's always tons of it. So here's some fun. Okay, well, you wanted to show fly. Here's fly over here. Okay. Sorry, guys. Again, if I'm going too quick, just say, Ange, slow down. This is all... So over here, there's a maquette of the fly that was that was made early on. There was there's Let's spider see if fly I can has get been in, up a little bit. has been in development as a film off and on for over a decade now, and so that was one of the early versions. There was a fly. The other thing people might be interested in is that. So Phil Tippett worked on the Spiderwick film, and we'll show you some of the maquettes that he did. That's a cast of the Tauntaun. Uh, puppet that he created for the Empire Strikes Back. It's one of my, definitely one of my treasured possessions. We have a lot of weird stuff. Yeah, like I do. Zuki eyes. Yeah. <laughs> These were just like toy glasses that you find in a dime store. Yeah, that were lenticular, so it made it look like you were blinking when you. We bought it at a flea market, didn't we? Yeah. I love dime store stuff because I bought and received so many toys from dime stores when I was a kid. So I'm kind of fascinated with all that stuff. There's a lot of junk here. This is just like a vintage microscope set. Some old kites. Sigmund and the Sea Monster. Just stuff. Felix like... the Cat. Vintage radio that I got T. Yeah, that works. It works. Pretty awesome. Cool hogs wheel somebody made. Yeah, fan made. I try to keep as much of the fan made stuff as we as we get. We yeah. Get some pretty cool stuff. Owl bear puppet. That we bought at Gen Con. Yep. And, okay. All right, let's, let's see go. what so else. We're gonna, okay. We're going to show them Spiderwick. So we'll sorry. Spiderwick stuff. Yay. Uh, a couple props. Here's one prop. Okay, hold on. I'm going to, I'm turning around here. Slowly. Also, there's just lots of cool stuff here. People doop, ask doop. about the props. Here's one. The lightning rod that Jared stabs Mogarath with from his house. Here it is. It used to have the ball. But it broke. <laughs> That's one problem. Very exciting, right? Somewhere is. Let me grab it while you're tooling around, Ann. Okay. You can show them the shelf with the, the maquette. Sure. And then I'll, I'll show pull you all. Out, um, the one treasure prop we have. You know, here's the thing. When this is your house, like, really, what do you need for holiday gifts? Like, T is one of those people that he's like, oh, if I want it, he usually buys it. So I have to resort to getting him pretty strange holiday gifts, but pretty awesome holiday gifts. You know, even just like a full-size Kermit the Frog. But like this, which I don't know if you can see, is commemorating the sale of a million copies of Elton John's greatest hits. And this was presented to Bernie Taupin, who wrote all of Elton John's music, well, most of, because Tony's a huge Elton fan, hence the pinball machine. Um, so yeah, so Tony is, I don't know where it is. in there. I don't know where. <laughs> what are you looking for? I'm looking for Jared's. We have Jared's sweatshirt somewhere here. Oh, it's what? in the other. It's is archived it, in oh, there. It's archived. That's it's right. archived. So we have our ar like, archival art boxes as well. Is that a jester? Which one? I don't know. Okay, so here we go. We're looking at the shelves, which are packed. Full. And Tony is a Virgo, and for any of you who have a Virgo in your life, you know how organized and pretty meticulous they are. So he has all these organized very, very well. Hey, Gibbo. Um, and <laughs> there's so many. There's all his D&D uh, &D figs and all of Monster Manual, Player's Handbook. Uh, yep, that original campaign, D&D &D campaign. These are some cool potions that we found at the Ren Fair this guy made. The Laughing Hyena is pretty awesome, and they all have potions inside of them, and T uses them when we play Dungeons & Dragons. He's like, just okay. so you know, that's how many servings of Invisibility Potion you have. Yes. So, I couldn't find it. what do you I, got up here? Filed away. There's some of the maquettes from the Spiderwick film. These are cast... So there's Thimble Tack, the Goblin, and Hog Squeal. Which awesome. Is pretty neat. Yeah. 
And then, and again, there's lots of toys lots just of toys up here everywhere. everywhere. McDonald's yes, toys. Yes, full-size Kermit. Um, okay, so I think for Wandla fans, a couple of you mentioned Wandla. You might dig this. This is a maquette of Mother. This was given to key people who helped launch the trilogy. And we've also given a few to some of the people who are working on adapting it. Who sculpted this? Uh, a fellow named Martin Meunier. And Martin has worked with Tim Burton for years. He worked on uh, films like uh, Nightmare Before Christmas and James and Giant Peach. And he sculpted this for me. And then our friend Dave White made these autos for me. With his uh, laser printer. With his, with, well, his 3D printer, yeah. Oh, and yeah, then sorry, look, someone printer. gave us a fan. I can't remember her name. She sent us some really neat stuff oh, over man, the years. Awesome. It's a little hand-sculpted row vendor. Um, these are my copies of the book. So I, I do I refer to my own books when I'm working all the time? In fact, it's funny, Angie. If you look, like this first copy of Wandla, the spine's all cracked. Because you grab it that so same I gra way I grab every it, time. yeah. So I'm like, oh, what did I say on page whatever? So a lot of times... The, the stickums are like, look, it's just totally broken. But when I was working on the third book, I would have had this book wide open while I was working on it. And the, the dust jackets often become tattered and fall off. So same thing, Kenny and the Dragon. These are all my studio copies. Down below are all my sketchbooks, when I kept an active sketchbook. But you can get an idea of, these are sketchbooks from the 90s. Can you randomly open one of those? I can absolutely randomly open one. Uh, let me find a good one. It's got a lot of cool stuff in it. Well, it's I mean, Tony I D's fantastical sketchbook. I mean, jeez. I mean, you title named like, it. Oh, I'll tell you why. This oh, is, yes. Here we go. It's it's preliminary Spiderwick sketches. That's why. There's the Kelpie. There's the sketch for the Kelpie. So this is from 2004, and I was sketching out the plates for Spiderwick's field guide. I remember this. We were doing this idea of when you looked at a Kelpie head on, it actually looked like an old man that looks fishing. Like a man. That's awesome. It looked like a man fishing. That was kind of how it, it, it hid. Mm. Never did it. I but felt like I couldn't fit. quite pull it off. There's the Nixie. Yeah, Mermaids. that's a dice bag, Warren. I'll show that to you in a minute. Mermaid stuff. So, yes, it's it's a it's the sketchbook. There were loose sketches as well, but this was my kind of move, you know sketchbook that collected most of the Spiderwick field guide. Yes, that is a dice bag. Hold that up. This was, <laughs> a, this was a dice bag that we made for Gen Con. Yes, because you've got to have sold. your bag of holding. And then there's a little guy, a little goblin guy with it. That we used to sell these. Uh, we don't offer them anymore. I think the manufacturer was kind of a pain. That's the only reason. Do why you have I'm a forced. super early sketchbook? Oh yeah. Um, uh, Dalton Nunes is asking. Dalton Nunes wants to see a super early sketchbook. I'm trying to find one that's. This one is. I drew really light in it. Let me see. This one is from 1995 and 1996. What? So this is right after Planescape. Oh, yeah, that is. So, I mean, I, I don't know if I have any of my high school sketchbooks here. That would be, and I didn't really keep sketchbooks in college. Some of this stuff actually made its way into limited edition sketchbooks that we would have sold at Gen Con. But, I mean, gosh, look how, oh, you Wind in the Willows. You were doing a Wind yeah. in the Willows there. Alice in Wonderland. That, that's a zoo drawn, drawn from life. That's all life drawing from the zoo. If there's anything near the end. That's cool. Just ideas for paintings and stuff. Oh, here you go. Don't oh, like that. There for you those go. of you who are into magic cards. Here's a whole page of Magic the Gathering. Magic sketches. From 1996. June 26, 1996. So He's... for those of you, like Frozen Shade, very well-known card. That was the original sketch. There it is. For Frozen Shade. The giant growth. Yeah. Let's see if there's any other sketches. This is sketches for Spider Magazine. There's your grandpa. Mm -hmm. That's drawn from life. That's drawn from life. That's you drawn from life. God, I haven't looked at this in a while. There's some D&D. &D. Drawn from life. Of course. There you go, my first magic card. Yes! That's June 8th, 1996, is Urborg Mind Sucker. And there you are. You probably just posed and I probably just drew you. I was probably just sleeping. You were stalking. I was stalking. You don't sleep that peacefully. <laughs> There you go. So there's some, there's an early sketchbook. Oh, there's we were going to see live music. That's Rebecca Gay drawing, mm -hmm. and we were hanging out in New York. That's, That's the awesome. Met. Went That's to all the, the armor yep. at the Met. Yeah, the armory at the Met. Cool. All right. What go. else you guys want to see? Um, was Tony going to illustrate Wind in the Willows? No, I just love Wind in the Willows. I I used to draw stuff from my favorite books. 
and it kind of ultimately became Kenny and the Dragon, really. You know, I mean, it, it's a, me- a melding of Wind in the Willows well, I feel, and the Reluctant Dragon. And I feel like in those sketchbooks, you've probably got, you know, you've got Wind in the Willows, you've got Alice in Wonderland, Alice Wonderland the Winnie the Pooh, yeah. you know, all that stuff all that stuff you I just loved in. drawing. Yeah. Um, let's see. What else do you guys want to see? Let us know. And we'll show you. Mm-hmm. Um, or if you see anything that you have questions about, this is pretty awesome. You know, artists, I think we, we tend to trade art with a lot of artists. Um, and this is actually a gift that was given to us by Cece Bell. And she is uh, the creator of El Defo, if yeah. some of you know that graphic novel. Um, he is awesome because he's awesome. Elton John. Elton John T's got a... Uh, blaster <laughs> oh my god this is a han solo blaster that i bought at a convention years ago and uh almost got it confiscated because i tried to fly with it and i declared it when i went through um the metal detector this was years before 9 11 and they freaked out and the cops came and it was just a fiasco <laughs> and i okay you know, question yes what do you think was your most fruitful year of work Oh, what do you wow. mean? What, That's a, every what do you year, mean by fruitful? Like I made a lot of money or I just made a lot of work? I don't know. Yeah, let me know. Clarify that, please. Clarify um, and then we can let you know what he means. There's an original by Mr. Eric Carl. <laughs> so amazing. amazing. So Come amazing. On. Come so on. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. Those are just... Oh, here you go. This is a little known thing. So this was Holly and I used to do a trunk show for Spiderwick. And we would go to schools when we launched Spiderwick, and we would um, show all these artifacts that Arthur Spiderwick had collected and created. On tour. This was a, when we were on tour, this was a dress um, by a Sprite that a Sprite had made. Sprite clothing. Sprite clothing that Arthur Spiderwick had collected. And really, kids didn't care about the dress, Ange, if you remember. They <laughs> were mostly the tiny hanger. In the tiny hanger. They're like, look, it's got a tiny hanger. It's got to be real. <laughs> So there's the uh, yeah. sprite clue. Yeah, I mean, how do you get that tiny of a hanger unless yes. you have really tiny fingers? This was my, you know, I think it's more, it was the chair that Paramount gave me, but it was not sitting on set by any means. However, there are the, there are the finding, final scripts for Spiderwick. I think here, this is the, no, it's this it, So each, uh, just so this you guys know, it. when they're writing um, drafts of a script, every different draft is a different color. So they, they change the, these are all the revisions, so you can go to see where the revisions are. So if you look at this thing, it's a rainbow of colors. That's how much rewriting they did. And I'm looking in this pouch, that's a piece of wood from the house that they had <laughs> discarded and thrown away. And, oh, wow, look, I haven't even looked at this. What year are you most proud of the work? That was oh, what he every, was so The most current year. And then here's something about going on set. This must be all the paperwork. I just shoved it all in there. There it is. So there you go. I, this would really be in the pouch. Hey, Rich Fall. How are you? Hey, We're giving a little virtual tour of the studio today just to uh, revisit everything. And these are and the hang books. Out. Virtually yeah, hang we're out. just hanging out. Virtually. You guys are hanging out. We're hanging out. Play um, a little pinball later. Play yeah, some Pac Man. What else we got? Any other questions, Ange? Yeah, if you guys have any questions, let us know. I will tell you. What do you think about the bathroom, T? Should we just give a glimpse? Give a glimpse. Do you guys want to? You guys have to see the bathroom, okay? So if you are an artist and you come to visit, and you come to visit us, we have one request from you. We don't expect you to bring anything with you, except your pen. That's right. And draw on the walls. So this is every artist that's visited us has drawn on the walls of the bathroom. And um, it has never been shown, actually. I usually don't. I never post photos of it. I try to keep it so that artists can draw whatever they like and not feel... Oh, Topher, the back of the door. Are you ready for this? So the first drawing that we ever did, or that we ever received on the walls here, and this came from visiting bookstores, and you'd go to bookstores and they would ask you to draw on the walls. So we thought, oh, when we own our own home, we're gonna do the same. So this was our first piece of art. Very first piece of art is from Brett Helquist, who clogged the toilet. <laughs> we have permission to share that story, yes. by the way. Yes, he clogged the toilet. Mm-hmm. So Next that's quite an unfortunate event. There's a our Frank, Frank Miller. Frank Miller. These are Aaron Gray. Aaron Gray. There's my 
Carrie Fisher, the restraining order is 500 feet. She, I asked her if she would write that, and she was, thought it was funny. She chuckled. She chuckled, Ange. She chuckled. <laughs> we There's me with Carrie and Mark uh, a few years back. So, yeah, we've got lots of... If you don't know, Mark Boss was baby fans. the... Um, this is a pretty amazing gift. This is when I won the Caldecott honor for the Spider and the Fly. Eric Carl sent me a lovely postcard and sent me color for my next book, which I was just agog, just stunned. I couldn't even believe Eric Carl would do that for me. Um, this Peter is Brown. Also, you want to know what I look at every day when I pee? <laughs> I look at a note from Mark Hamill that says, Best to Tony, thanks for letting me be a part of your saga. Because if you don't know, Mark did an incredible audio recording for the Spiderwick books, which has sadly gone out of print, but we are working on getting it back into print and available because it is such an unbelievable um, Got some performance. John Klassen. There's Mo. Judy Dan Santa. There's a Chris Roshka. Yeah. There's, there's Dave lots, Wiesner. Lots. So many. And there's, there's some more. <laughs> there's a Scott Fisher in the shower Scott here. Scott Fisher in the shower. Barbara McClintock's uh, <laughs> Zoom. Tom Engelberger. Lots of fun stuff in our crazy bathroom. And, of course, Brian Froud. Oh. Oh. Yep. And, yes, they all had to use the toilet after. That Travis was... Louie. Now, we've had a lot Jim of artists Gurney. visit who have somehow elusively not drawn. Robin Price Glasser has been here twice. You have photographs of her sitting on the toilet ready to draw, and she didn't draw. And, and Le Wynn Le... was just here, and she didn't draw either. We'll get, we'll get her. We'll get her. Sophie Blackall had visited. Because sometimes what happens is people come in here, and then they end up just looking. And they're like, ah. Uh, um, by the way, I will say, sorry, I'm going to turn this back on for one second. There's also tons of things to look at in the bathroom. Yeah. Of course, so, of course. you know, I mean, why have bathroom reading when you can have, I'm going to open this tea, but I don't want to mangle it. I'll let you do it. Yeah, it's old. It's it's just filled with toys. Yeah. Hot wheels. Just a few. I'm not obsessive or anything. Mm -hmm. I love little plastic figures. That's just in the bathroom. There you go. It's These funny, I think I'm so used to our house just seeming normal to me. It's like, now that I'm seeing it through everybody else's eyes, I'm like, this is kind of nuts, just They're saying. Like, this guy is crazy. <laughs> There's rust monsters Jim everywhere. Jim Gurney is a treasure. <laughs> Jim Gurney is a treasure. There yes. are rust monsters everywhere. There's toys everywhere. Yeah, exactly. That The guests come into here, and then they come in here to draw with their Sharpies. So we have usually... Our little bucket of Sharpies here or paint or whatever tools that they need. Yes. And then many of them get distracted. <laughs> yes. So, there yeah. So, there's the bathroom. There's the bathroom. You bet. Here's Hugo Cabaret. Mr. Brian sells me. Okay. What else do we got here? What else do you guys want to see? What other thing? <laughs> Rust Monster. What about your D&D toys? I always think that's an interesting. The little guys, the original dudes. The little plastic ones? Yeah, let's see that. Because you could tell that. I think that's a pretty cool fact. So if you don't know. Fact. Let me, let Bring grab, those over. Yeah, let me grab a monster manual. This is also, because you need to be reminded. Of my level of geekery? Yeah, your level of geekery. Okay, can we see the things on the miniature shelf on the wall? Oh, the those are the minis that. Um... Is dusting a nightmare or not much of a problem? Uh, I don't... It's not much of a problem because I don't do it. <laughs> just leave it let it get all oh these on. minis yeah oh Let's hold see on it looks like one guy's about to fall no uh oh can catch him he's gonna he, oh this should be interesting tension's high tension is high let's put the light back on Yay. these are the dark sword miniatures rich you have to come and visit rich fall yes, we should you, you should you need to come in here and see all of this in person see my my hoarding in person <laughs> This is on a little, you know, I got one of those coin things that you present, you know, you put your coin collection on, guys. I got it at Michael's. This is all. These are all the Tony D miniatures that uh, Dark Sword Miniatures has made. Well, not all of them. I can't even fit them all on at this point. But some of my favorite ones uh, that I've put up over the years. There's a Rust Monster. And, and I just put shoe polish on them and rub it off. I don't, I don't have time to paint them, so I, use, I do shoe on, polish. So cool. He has the mom owl bear and her little babies. So yep. that's uh, that's what <laughs> we that should is. sell tickets. 
David May said, you could sell tickets. We really... <laughs> we, we've had colleges it come is through. Remember, like, Angie, we had an art school come through? They were kind of like, fun. holy cow. Yeah, exactly. Okay, like, But this is what you have to do when you work at home. You have to entertain yourself. Yeah. If you don't know, and you're a D&D nut like me, this is the monster manual that I grew up with in the 70s. There are classic monsters in here that make their debut for the first time, including the Boulet. Lay. Uh, oh, look at that. I turned right to it. Yes. Was the owl bear. Owlbear. That was not and planned. Impressive. That was not planned. And, of course, the rust monster. If you don't know, Gary Gygax created these from a bag of dime store toys that he bought way back when in the day. And I have uh, tracked down copies of these toys. Here's the boulet. So these were just Japanese plastic Toys. toys that you would buy in a in a you know in a general store or whatever. I can show you I can show you examples of them packaged as well. Mm -hmm, I'm sure you can. And here's the owl bear. So the owl bear of all it took me years to kind of track them all down. And I first learned about it when I went to TSR for the first time in the early '90s. I um, Tim Beach, who was the editor of the Monsters Manual, had um, had these in his cubicle, and I remembered them from when I was a kid. And he said yes, he verified that Gary was inspired by these toys. So they're a little hard to track down, but you can find them on eBay. And then, of course, my favorite you is know, if you, if you, you know, we're all at home now. Might as, well, <laughs> might as well go on eBay. Here's what I love that you we don't realize the rust monster has has teeth and and kind of googly eyes. <laughs> there were other monsters in this set, like this kind of big kind of dino dinosaur that's, guy. That's hilarious. That was never made. Why in. do they not have something like that in D and D? That's just like a friendly dude. I know. This Everything guy wants was to also kill one us. of them. He was also. Way back oh, wow. when, so he kind of a lizard man guy. Anyway, that's them, and uh, there you, you know. go. And then you know, bandit car. Kind yeah, of have that. And Herbie. And Herbie, all all the vehicles. The cars from my childhood. Yep. So yeah, I mean, as and far as and dusting, and some of it gets dusted. I don't know about that. Most fifty year old men buy the real version of that car when they hit midlife. <laughs> Tony I get... bought the Hot Wheels <laughs> version of that car when yeah, I hit midlife. Of wait, of Smokey and the Bandit. Or Herbie. <laughs> yes, both. I own both of them. <laughs> that's, that's how it is. Um, what else can we show you guys? Yeah, what else? Hey, how about um, Gazonk Puppet? Oh, my gosh. Yes, this is pretty funny. This so is kind of interesting. I'm just thinking of things that are kind of interesting in so here. So our friend James Wajital. Puppet builder. He's a puppet builder for Henson. And uh, a lot of uh, Late Night with John Oliver. Yeah. Le le uh, last week tonight Any with John Oliver. Yeah, anytime you see the John Oliver. Puppets. He's doing he's them. Building them. He, he was an old Henson puppeteer. When we went on tour for G is for One Kazakh, which was my alphabet book, where a bunch of numbers show up thinking it's a counting book, I, the, the book completely gets derailed like a Muppet Show skit. And so when I would do my presentations, Angela would sit in the audience, just like the book, it was very meta, with this onesie puppet, and then harass me with the onesie puppet. Hey, buddy, when are you going to start counting? Like you would do stuff like that. And then I would yell at you. And we thought it was really funny, but I think adults were completely confused. But kids liked it. Kids liked seeing me being Well, it was really just an excuse for me to, you know, do me. events with you and harass you. And harass me. Hey, every time I do a voice, it's always <laughs> like this. It's like a Eugene Levy kind of voice. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a week I'm having. <laughs> so there you go. That's the onesie puppet. Nice. And there he sits. Um, okay, this is just me asking you this question. Yes. On this bookshelf. Yes. What would be like your top three most influential books? Ooh, okay. I can do Come that. Come on, that's pretty good, right? That was good. It's like a game show. It's like Supermarket Sweep. Okay, now you've got 30 seconds to grab them. Da 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 da! Look at that. Like, no, wasted no you time. You knew exactly where that was. Yeah. Yes. Brian Froud's Fairies came out in 1976, 1977, 1978. Okay. 78. Yes, 1978. So I was nine when mom got this book. This is the, my mom, I replaced... Her copy, and I got. She gave me the copy we had growing up. This is the copy I had growing up. This book was so hugely influential on me, especially Spiderwick. And in many later years, I got to get. Um, where is it? Both Brian and Wendy have signed it for me. That's me. Awesome. Get Alan Lee. That's my. Get him to sign it. Okay, that's one. That's one. Okay, then go to college. My well, it's kind of a. Can I do a twofer? Because it happened back to back. So in art school, 
My last year in art school, I discovered this book, which is out of print. A Treasury of the Great Children's Book Illustrators. It's just an introduction to children's illustration at the turn of the century. This is the first one, though, where I start to put all the pieces together. I'd already wanted to be a children's book illustrator, but this started... So it's it's all your... It's Edward Lear, John Tenniel, Walter Crane, Caldecott, Kate Greenaway, Beatrix Potter, Ernest Shepard, Arthur Rackham, Edmund Dulac, Kai Nielsen, Howard Pyle, and Sue Wyeth, and W.W. Denslow. This, I... This, life changer. This book was a life changer for me. I read it cover to cover, learned about all the... Uh, turn of the century children's book illustrators from the golden age of illustration and immediately within months had found James Hamilton's biography of Arthur Rackham. And there you was, go. You called it Drew Meyer. Yes, is it. Yeah. This book was so total. And this is another one I read cover to cover. I mean, come on. And if you don't know, but maybe you should, is that he became the influence or the, the inspiration for Arthur, Arthur Spiderwick. Spiderwick. Yeah. So if you look at Arthur Spiderwick and you look at Arthur Rackham, that's why they're the like books, one in the same. Yeah, that's, that's why the why book he's... was dedicated to Rackham. He was such a huge influence to me. I still look at this stuff and marvel at it. I can't... It's just unbelievable. The, the, the delicate line work and stuff is just so... He was like a rock star of his time. Oh, illustrator. absolutely. And I've been thinking about him, too, because... You know, he weathered war, World War One, had an effect on his book sales. He had a lot of, uh, you know, personal things he had to go through as well. His wife passed away before he did. So, you know, I, I think about that when I think about what we're going through now, that, you know, many artists have weathered storms like this. I would say those plus that monster manual that I pulled out, Ange. Let's see. Just, there it is. Oh, Christian Zoltar Balomo. Ciao, Tony and Angela. We met 20 years ago in Milan. Oh, wow. That was a long time. That was a long time. That was our first trip to Italy. It was our first trip to Italy. We had such a great time. We went to Florence from there, and I want to say Venice. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Florence and Venice after we were in Milan. We have photos of that. And the only thing I remember, besides our uh, our excursion... Gelato. Definitely gelato. (laughs) In Italy, if I'm not mistaken, Christian... You cannot give money away as a prize. This was a Magic the Gathering tournament of some sort. You could only give away gold. So they literally had a small sack of gold that the winner would take home, which I thought was, well, this is awesome. I love this. Grazie mille for yes. uh, hanging with us today. Yes, and thank you for coming today and for taking care of us way back when. We're, so what's a, a third one? That was the, your twofer. Any... And I did uh, the Monster Man. Oh, okay. I did Monster Man because I've had it oh, since yeah. I was a kid. Yep. So was that yours from when you were a kid? No, mine, all my books from, I think mom sold them. They're gone or they're in storage. These are all book, you've done art for all of these? Most of them. Near the end, it's just the new books. But yeah, most of this stuff is stuff I, I worked on. It's kind of a mix mosh now. If you have any questions, let us know. If there's anything you want to see, the let us know. The somewhat organized. There are collections of books here. I'm going to pan back here pan so back. we can, so can or by books. pan, I mean step. <laughs> Okay. Children's book illustrators, small sketchbooks and convention sketchbooks, fantasy illustrators, more fantasy illustrators, uh, sequential in comics and graphic novels, Dungeons and Dragons, Brian Froud and Frank Pizzetta share a shelf. There's some more oversized books here. These are some rare books that I've collected over the years. My books, my sketchbooks. This is all fantasy and fairy tales and mythology. How many Um, books have you illustrated? Oh, God, I don't know. A lot, right? Oh, Topher wants to know, did you draw in your original D&D books? No, but I copied out of them a lot. I, and I can, my, Topher, oh, I what's up, Topher? Hey, Topher, I'll show you. I think I have a few here. Just, oh. I'm going to stop for one second on your way. Yeah. This is our crazy hat collection. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to put on a crazy hat. You need, a, you need to put on a fez or a tiny yeah, fez. fez. You need to put on a cowboy hat. Now's the, I or, like now or a more, top hat. I feel like now more than ever, we need to be wearing crazy hats. But Topher, for you, here are some of my, me copying out of the Dungeons and Dragons Monster Manual. From when you were a kid. This middle is... school. This is all middle school. Dude, it's, you were so good. Look at that crazy. hand lettering. Oh, yeah. I love lettering. I love... These, I'm not sure what these are from. These are you from You look a young. Book. That was... This that... looks younger than that. This might be more like fifth grade. This is definitely like seventh and eighth grade. That's good. Yeah. I don't know if there's a year on any of them. Come on. That's awesome. I think they're all 82. Like peak Dungeons and Dragons era. That's awesome. Look at these guys. A whole bunch just having fun with Sharpies. Beholder. Yeah. They've held up pretty well. Yeah, they're in dark. Lizard man. Darkness. Um, 
And really, nothing's changed, Ange, has it? Shambling mound. <laughs> just a little tiny one. Just a little tiny shambling, shambling mound. mound. Come on, that was pretty... Look at that detail, though. It's pretty awesome. I probably awesome. just traced it. I mean, let's... Yeah, but still, Vulture Lion. You're still impressed? I am impressed. I'm oh, very impressed. Oh. Here's Maglobiet, the Goblin God. Were you, was that his name, or you named him that? No, I think that's his copied out of the... Uh... Maglobiet. Here's a poem I wrote in third grade. Read I'm... it for us. Go ahead, recite it. Godzilla, Godzilla, are you in love with a gorilla? No, I'm not. I'm in love with a mastodont. <laughs> There it is. There it is. And now you know why I don't why write books in rhyme. Because even back then, I was pretty lousy. <laughs> the rhyme was off, and so was the meter. Come on. But I you was, know what? I was eight. <laughs> Listen to the Godzilla. Rhyme. Where's the gorilla? Where is the gorilla? Well, he's, done, he's left the gorilla. He's already on his way. I would probably say you'd want a crying gorilla in the background. Just, to, I, oh, wait. You're going to say that too. Mimi has had oh, a costume change, they... and so is Pippin. He's um, Pippin is just so you know. Speaking of Godzilla. <laughs> oh, no, it's a Godzilla. What is he? Oh, no. A Stegosaurus? A Stegosaurus. And Mimi's a dragon. A bone he looks dragon. like he's really enjoying that. He loves. Who's responsible he... for this? <laughs> And Mimi, that's amazing. Yes. Well done. All right, Angie, we only have a few more minutes. Does anyone else okay. have any requests before we Any other questions? Our studio tour. I'm going to take a break over the weekend, but we're going to resume next week. We'll do some more drawing. I think I want to draw some um, in pencil, hmm? finished pencil, like I did for Kenny and the Dragon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kenny and the Dragon stuff. Yeah, and if you guys cool. have thoughts of stuff you want to see Tony draw... Let's play Pictionary. Let's play Pictionary. <laughs> so this is one of the finished pieces from Kenny and the Dragon, uh, The Book of Beasts. Yes. And it was done in pencil, so I thought maybe we'll, we'll show how I uh, do finished art in pencil. Can you just um, give us the fun fact about this piece of art? Oh, <laughs> the running theme. This was based on a, it's Graham playing the piano, which he played the piano in the first book, but I never got to draw that. And, um... It was based on a photograph of a very young Elton John sitting at the piano as a kid. And a friend of ours went to Elton John's Oscar party. As you do. As, as you, you do. do. Not our friend, as I do. I our do. friend Brian Gott, our amazing friend Brian Gott. Yes. And so I had sent him this photo and a uh, scan of I just took a photo of it. And he showed it to Elton John and, uh, and David, his husband. And they said... Oh, something like that's terrific, bloody or, terrific, or terrific something or fantastic. like. Fantastic, and I was of course very excited and wished we could have gotten that officially as a blur for the book. But <laughs> we'll do some of that. Oh, next that's week. good. We can get him a copy. We can do some of that next week. Um, or if you have any ideas, just let us know. Drop it in the comments section. Uh, I'm going to keep drawing as long as we're here and and we're all at home, so we can kind of hang out virtually. Oh wait, I have to interrupt you. Yes. Where do you get your archive sleeves? Gaylord. Gaylord. Archive, yes. Here, show them. Let's show them really quick. Yes. We're going to end on a, on a really... Nerdy note? Clear, clerical uh, note. What's in there? Hmm. Here you go. There's the nerdiness. There it is. This is it. Gaylord Archival is the name of the company. Hi! So we put them in these. Uh, we do so that, that way. We that. also, if we want to get really fancy... We have cotton gloves to handle original we artwork We do, with. but uh, clearly I did not get that memo today. <laughs> um... Thank you guys so much. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Hang in there. Yesterday was a rough day for me. I was very anxious. Today I'm feeling a little better. I had a great time drawing with everybody this week. Ange and I are going to do it again next week. So tune in and have a great weekend. Hang in there. Bye. Bye, guys.